So, so 08 to you, because you, you were an experienced investor. You had 20 years in the markets. Uh, you'd been through. <laughs> I had the shit kicked out of me. Excuse right. me, Frank, no. my French. I am paid college tuition for 500 kids in uh, Essex County, New Jersey, and I meet with the kids periodically. And I tell them throughout life you can have setbacks, but what determines success is how you handle the setbacks. Yeah. So, you know, when you're down, you figure out the source of your problems, what your mistakes you made, circle the wagons, and put your nose to the grindstone, and, and work hard, you know? You don't make the kind of money we make in the business without making sacrifices, without taking risks. Uh, and without working hard, you know, is, is, there's too much efficiency in the economic system. It doesn't happen by accident. You know, I, I, even to this day, you know, I, I spent half of my time up in New York, half my time, less than half my time, tax-wise, uh, nice. more than half time in this home you're sitting with now here in, in Boca Raton. But, you know, basically, um, uh, when I'm in New York, I put the lights on and I shut the lights off. And I'm 75 and I'm financially satiated. It's a certain style you develop. See, uh, when I came to Wall Street originally, I worked hard at a necessity. As I mentioned before, I had a six-month-old kid who's right. now 52, uh, had no money in the bank, uh, and had to provide for my family. And uh, you develop certain habits of work and certain styles, and it's hard to change those habits. Well, well let's go back to that first, that first down year, because I'm, I'm interested in, in how you handled it, how you isolated the problems and what you did well, that was an easy one. Uh, we got caught. Uh, I'm the so-called expert in equities. Uh, and, and when I explain to people when they have money with Omega, they're relying not only on my own investment judgment, but my ability to incentivize and bring people on to broaden my scope sure. of activity. And uh, we got really hurt big time in non-dollar bonds, which was not my area of expertise, but I had a man who did a great job in, in 1993 and I forgot to sell everything in 1994. We gave a lot of it back, not all of it, but most of it back. Um, and so, you know, we, we changed some staffing um, and uh, we got the portfolio more properly positioned. We had a big comeback in, in 1995, et cetera. But there's, there's no magic to it. You know, you gotta figure out what's going on in the world and, you know, get yourself properly positioned. But it's, it's interesting because it's that, it's that bouncing back that I guess, Exemplifies. Well, the markets mean reverting, you know. Sure. Re recessions, uh, bear markets, there's certain historical recurring patterns. You know, uh, typical bear market, it happens every four or five years. We haven't had one now for ten, nine or ten years, but they happen every four or five years. And a bear market is more stocks go down than go up. They go down for about a year. They go down about 25%. And they're discounting a typical recession, whereas a contraction of real GDP, about 1% peak to trough. 08 was much more severe than average. That was a 54% bear market. But interesting, real GDP contracted by over 2%. So we had a, a, a contraction GDP twice the average, and we had a bear market twice the average. So there's a linkage. And what's, what's kept me going uh, and made me successful is, you know, I believe every recession sows the seeds for the next economic recovery, and every recovery sows the seeds for the next recession. And, um, you know... I've learned a lot, and you learn, and, and if something sounds too good to be true, you know it's not true. When everybody's loaded in the same stock, be careful because it's not going to work. You know, you, you develop certain guideposts along the way. But, but you, you also have to keep your investors because a lot of people, when you see something like that. Well, we've lost some about. investors. We picked up some investors. Uh, you know, uh, I've, I've actually knocked out investors. You know, uh, one fellow, uh, I won't give you his name, came in and then he started calling me every second day for performance numbers. I explained to him, you know, I'm a long-term investor. I'm not looking to manage your money day by day. And if this is what you're looking for, I would appreciate, you know, here's your money back and invest somewhere else. You, you know, you, you, you want to state your value proposition to the investor. And if they accept your value proposition, that's good, but if they have different goals, then they should not invest with you. So when I started out, the firm in 1992, technically we took money in January 1 of 92, I started up December 1st of 91, uh, our first exhibit in our pitch book was uh, what our goals were. Uh, 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 you know, beat the S&P, no down years, 12% uh, returns, less volatility than the market. I said, that would make me happy. 
And every time I made a presentation, this is what makes me happy. If this does not make you happy, then don't invest with me because we're, we're doomed to have a failed relationship. But if this is for you, you won't find anybody that's going to work harder for you uh, with any greater degree of integrity. And we have self-alignment. You know, today, over half the money we're managing in Omega is the GP, general part of capital. So we have a total alignment of our interests, which I love. Yeah. Uh, you know, I look, I look through the eyes of the investor. And that's kind of how I learned at Goldman Sachs. We, when I was there, people argue now with the firms differently. I, I don't know enough to say that's the case, but uh, we were very, very client-oriented. The client was king. So, so 08 to you, because you, you were an experienced investor. Right? You had 20 years in the markets. Uh, you'd been through- I had the shit kicked out of me. Excuse right. me, friend, no. my French. Right, but, but, so, but what, what did that look like to you? How did you maintain your focus and your discipline through that? Because your performance- well, I had a responsibility. You know, of course. I had a responsibility. I had people's capital. I had to figure out what to do. I missed the significance of Lehman's insolvency. Uh, uh, we were up two weeks before Lehman went. And we were very slow in reacting to the Lehman debacle, as was the uh, government, by the way. They didn't yeah. fully appreciate it, but you don't blame anybody but yourself. And I was slow in adjusting, but uh, we made an adjustment. Like I said a moment ago, you know, the recession sowed the seeds for the recovery. Uh, you know, we hung on. We bet that the combination of fiscal and monetary forces would uh, resuscitate the economy and the market, and that judgment turned out to be correct. You know, um, Ben Bernanke, who really helped save the system, he figured out he had to get the economy growing. And the best way to get the economy growing was to get wealth up, the so-called Bagu effect, 5% mm -hmm. of wealth created is consumed. And he said the best way to get the wealth up is to get the stock market up. So, uh, and that benefited me as an investor. And um, this whole bull market has been based upon very easy money and accommodated monetary policy. And up until recently, a very mild economic recovery. It's kind of picked up steam lately. But, you know, by and large, it worked the way it normally works.